Y mae llawer o draddodiadau a choelian Cymru yn gyffredin i'r holl siroedd. Ond ni clywais am draddodiad ar hen o rach yn unman, ond ymlwyf y llanc y felyn. Hello, my very good friends, and welcome to another episode of Time Between Times Storytelling with me, Owen Staten. I have been unwell for a little while, my voice broken and my throat sore. Although uncomfortable for a day or two, it was nothing compared to what we are going to talk about in today's tale. The quote at the start of the episode comes directly from the source which first described this phenomena. I have found it in my good friend Delith Bader's book, The Folklore of Wales Ghosts which he co-wrote with Mark Norman, and I will tell it to you today, the hen rach o cors vochno. It's a scary one, my friends, so you want to prepare yourself for that. But of course, being scared as part of a tale is something that makes us feel alive, and that is why we gather at the fire pit at the heart of the forest, at the time between times, to feel that very way. Easter is coming. The sun is riding high in the sky. I can feel the warmth start to seep from the earth. It's a joyous time. A time of plenty. A time where children run in the gardens and the parents are thankful the winter has been left behind. But for us, we do not stop gathering. Gathering for tales traditionally told. Though we are in the bright light, we think of the dark and we can return there whenever we wish. So, my friends, sit back, relax, close your eyes if it's safe to do so, and come with me to that place you want to be. You get up, you walk into the corridor, placing on your jacket, you take a deep breath and step outside the house. The fresh spring air greets you. It fills your lungs, makes you feel happy, joyous, alive. You close your door behind you, walk to the road. Take that right turn at the bottom, watching the cars go by. The lights are just starting to come on in the houses around you. The hustle and bustle of normal life surrounds you. But you want nothing more. Then go to the forest, and you take that path. There they are, the great trees that have seen many tales stand before you. You look for that break, that place where the path leads into them, and you take it. Their branches are starting to come alive once more, filled with colour, filled with birds. But as you step under their boughs, A silence descends. A chill fills you. For it is dark in here. You move onwards quickly, coming, coming to the old mossy tower. There it is. How many people have lived there? How many people have come and gone over the centuries? And now it stands dilapidated but full of soul. As you turn to leave there, something catches, catches your eye. There at the base of the tower something moved, hiding behind the old stones. For a second you thought you saw something tall, something gangly, something dark. Quickly shuffle away. A chill goes down your spine, but you move on, crossing the babbling brook until you see it in front of you, the fire pit at the heart of the forest. You step in there and the fire is burning bright this night. You look up 
and see that the sun and the moon share the same sky, for now is the time between times, the time when it's neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey, the time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows way far away for thin, so thin that for a moment just a few moments. You can reach into that realm and for a few moments it can reach back. Now is the time. Now is the time that people see lights in the sky. Now is the time that people see ghosts. Now is the time that people see fairies. Now is the time between times. You sit on that log, feeling the warmth from the fire pit. The warmth from those who have gathered here, friends and family of now and of the past. Everyone you want to be here is here, gathered for the same reason. To enjoy a tale traditionally told by a storyteller. Today's storyteller stands up. He takes a breath, he clears his throat and begins the tale he will tell today. The tale of the Hain Rach of Kors Vochno. Kors Vochno lies in the heart of Wales. There it is near the Dovey Estuary, one of the greatest peat bogs in all of the country. For years many people eked out a living on the borders of these bogs, burning them to keep warm, burning them for light burning them to keep their little lives going. There, in an old farm, a dilapidated farm, on the corner of the village of Korsvochno, there lived a young woman called Betsan of Llain Vanedel. The house barely had a roof. The doors were hanging off its hinges. But every night she would come there and sit by the fire and dream of a better life. The winter this year, over 200 years ago, had been very difficult for all in the village. An ago, a plague, had swept in as if on a vicious wind, and many people had been taken ill. Nearly everyone that Betsan knew had faced this ago at one time or another. And in church every Sunday people spoke of what what could have possibly brought it. And sinister stories started to be told. Some of the old ladies in the village told of a sinister spectre called the Rhein Rach, the old witch, which had once stalked these lands. They said it lived in the bog, feasting on the plants and small animals to be found there. But no one had seen it. It was said that the Rhein Rach could creep into any house, no matter how hard you tried to keep it out. It would walk up to the bed of those it wanted to inflict, stand over them, and then bend over until its mouth was inches away from its victim's mouth and breathe out. <sighs> causing this plague to enter the person who would then fall deathly ill. Many people would die of this horrible illness. Anarhen Rach seemed to take joy in causing that to happen. But many people didn't believe that. Illnesses came and went. People died, people got better. But one night... A mist fell upon the small village, and there on the outlines, in a small house in Llein Vanedel, Betsan looked out. She saw a shadow start to creep its way down through the paths that lead to the village. It was over seven foot tall, so thin and gangly that it seemed to stalk rather than walk making its slow, tip-tapping way through the houses. Its arms hung down below its knees, and there its hands were hooked claws. Its black, black hair stood on a massive head that seemed to bobble back and forth. 
Betson watched through her window as it came to a nearby house. And then gliding onto the ground, it pulled itself along the floor. And even though the, the house opposite, the bottom of the door must have been less than an inch from the ground, the creature crept under it, making itself flat. Betson's heart almost stopped as it disappeared, pulling its legs last of all underneath and vanished inside. Moments later, it appeared once more, pulling itself out from under the door before disappearing into the fog. A fog it seemed to cause with its own breath. That morning as the sun broke, Betson burst out of her house. She dared not go out before that and called to all her neighbours. But to her horror, she found that those of her friends that lived in the house that she saw the creature enter were so ill they could not come from their beds. She did not know what to say, but thought she should speak to the minister. His name was Reverend Isaac, but he would not be at the church until later on that day. She waited waited until she knew he would be there, ready for the evening service. Then carrying her bag and a torch, she made her way out into the bog itself. The mist fell down like a blanket. It washed away the summer and brought in the dark like a winter storm. Huddling a coat around her, she stepped on the pathway taking the two-mile journey to the church. The bog was all around her. She could smell it. She could feel it. She could hear it squelching under her feet. The only thing that stopped her turning back was turning her thoughts to stories, stories that comforted her, stories that made her feel like a child again, because it was said that the bard Taliesin had been born merely a stone's throw from the village of Korsvochno. Those happy stories kept her mind away from the horrors that she could have seen, until she heard the church bells start to ring. She'd hurried her steps and knew that she had not far to go. Surely the Reverend would know what to do. But as she turned a small bend in the path, she caught something out of the corner of her eye. And there she saw it. Arhen Arach. Sat on a stone in the middle of the bog, it seemed to be eating bog beans and toadstools, picking them from the ground and sucking them as if they were something slimy and beautiful, when in fact they were horrible. Her hair was lank and dark and hung down below her shoulders. Her legs were so thin they looked like the legs of some great bird. And seeing Betsan, she turned around and stepped up, standing over seven feet tall, her head so big that Betson thought that she would overbalance and fall to the ground. She dropped the toadstool and opened her mouth and spoke in a voice as old as the mountains and as capricious as the sea. <laughs> Good evening. No star, no star, said Betsan. But the creature just stared at her, turned around and hopped into the bog with a splash before it could be heard washing and wishing its way away. Betsan screamed and fell to the ground, her whole blood ran cold. And then out of the mist came the Reverend Isaac, running and calling towards Betsan, who just lay there on the ground, panting and shivering. He picked her up and took her to the church, and only when they sat there with the fire warm could she bring herself to tell of what she had seen. 
ar hyn o fraach. There it was. Reverend Isaac seemed to know what she was talking about. It's almost like he had heard something like it before. And the next day, he gathered all the villagers together, those, of course, who were well enough to get out of their beds. And they burned the peat bog all around the village in one great fire. It was only that that could drive away or hen rach, or so he said. And to those who witnessed it, it said that the flames rose as high as the mountains, as the whole village watched the bog burn. Betson was never the same again. The confident, kind, courageous girl became someone terrified who would only leave the house in cases of dire need. As the years went by, the people stopped using the peat to burn and changed more to coal. And it was said that the Rhein Rach was not seen again since then. The piece I read at the start describing the Rhein Rach it translates as, There are many traditions and beliefs in Wales that are common in all counties, but I never heard of the tradition of the Rhein Rach anywhere but in Llankavelin Parish and the village of Korsvochno in particular. And that, my friends, is the dark, scary, sinister story of our Rhein Rach told by me. Owen Staten. Details of this story are found in the book The Folklore of Wales, Ghosts by Delith Bader and Mark Norman. I will put a link to where you can get that book in the show notes. Of course, any mistakes or differences are mine and mine alone. I am the storyteller and sometimes the storyteller loses themselves in the tale. And as they say, when legend becomes fact, print the legend. I thank you very much, my friends, for joining me here at the fire pit at the heart of the forest at the time between times for another tale traditionally told. I thank you so much for listening in every week and I hope that you are enjoying the tales. Please leave a review if you wish to do so. It helps me a great deal and helps other people find us at the fire pit at the heart of the forest. If you're feeling really generous and Easter is here, why not buy me a coffee at coffee.com forward slash Owen Staten or join my going, going, growing band of Patreons at owenstaten.com. Sorry, I'll do that again. Join my growing band of Patreon followers at patreon.com forward slash Owen Staten 7. I appreciate every single one of you. I am a poor Talbot boy in the south of Wales telling tales of his homeland and nothing pleases me more that people all around the world are listening to these stories of Wales. Thank you so much for being here with me. Your company is greatly appreciated. Until next time, Nostal.